Привет! Это я, комиссар Бинков, представляю вам. Hello, комиссар Бинков presents you. F-35 vs. Su-35, part 2. Previously, we had Su-35s attack an island with F-35s defending it. Do check it out for details of the setup and rules. It ended with lightnings defending the island. But before we see how F-35s would fare when attacking, what if the previous scenario had six Sukhois attacking? With more missiles available for harassment and additional flankers to deal with concealed lightnings, luring all Su-35s would not be plausible. Sukhois could be expected to down one F-35 outright in each pair, while losing one or two of their own. Surviving flankers would still be numerous enough to split and runaway F-35s could be pursued and killed. Hit and run tactics wouldn't be an option for F-35. Lightnings could hope for another kill or two while dodging massive salvos before being wiped out. Survivors could go on towards the ground targets. While the fixed target would not be an issue, the one in unknown location might not be found. They could try to use its radar to look for the target, but that would be a laborious task. They could also fly low and slow and look for the target visually, but that risks fuel and enemy fire. Sukhois might be forced to return home before they run out of fuel without hitting both targets. But finally, what would happen in reversed roles? Four F-35As will be approaching the island. Two of them pack bombs. Sukhois defend. Unlike Sukhois, they choose to use their stealth and fly high the entire mission, thus conserving fuel. Still, they have to face the ground-based radar. Most common early warning radars work within L-band. Furthermore, it operates at a different wavelength. Planes like F-35 have larger radar cross-section when targeted by lower wavelengths. Detection range would increase. Ground-based radar would thus likely be detecting glimpses from some distance, even if Lightning's pilots carefully approach the island and manage their radar signature exposure. Lightnings would then speed up as much as possible. Four flankers would immediately be informed of the contacts and would silently approach the enemy. Flankers are faster than the attackers, but approaching them from the sides would require attackers not being aware of the threat. Lightnings would turn on their radars and spot pretty much any Su-35. To stay undetected, flankers would need to be far away, too far to chase down the attackers before bombs are released. This scenario will thus assume the average solution, which then dictates flankers remain close to the island. Flankers would go high and fast. Knowing they're being tracked, they would turn on their radars. While they may not see much at first, they would be guided by the ground radar. Jammers and countermeasures would be deployed, just like in previous scenario. The biggest difference this time would be inability of lightnings to hide part of their forces. With some F-35s having only two missiles, they would conserve them and not shoot from afar. Considering the different circumstances, lightnings might want to try and run away. Providing they haven't been on patrol for long, Sukhois might have enough fuel to catch up with fleeing lightnings. F-35s would have little chance of surviving in such a disadvantageous position, if caught up with. Even if downing some Sukhois, they're unlikely to prevail in close combat. But the scenario will assume lightnings will not run away. Due to more missiles carried and greater launch speed, flankers would feel more confident spending some missiles for harassment and shoot first. More missiles would follow. Decoys, jammers and other countermeasures would be in play, but with so many missiles cascading towards the lightnings, one would likely get hit. Additional Amrams might follow. Lightning's first salvo could fare better. Second Sukhoi salvo would enjoy better kill percentage due to more energy left in missiles. One or two more lightnings would be struck, leaving one or two unarmed F-35 versus one or two remaining Sukhois. After the last R-77 salvo, a sole F-35 would be left standing. In the end, those Sukhois would quickly deal with leftover F-35. Had the Lightnings fired their Amrams earlier, they might have prevented some of the Sukhois missiles to receive course corrections. 
but at the same time those Amrams would be less deadly. End result would be more lightnings left alive unarmed, facing greater number of Sukhois still armed with close combat heat-seeking missiles. Had this scenario had 6 lightnings going against 4 flankers, lightnings could start harassing early, complicating guidance corrections for the remaining flankers. They would also force the other side to use up more missiles from afar. A sole flanker would remain, badly outnumbered. Its last salvo could hope for up to one hit. Finally, in an all gunfight, a lone flanker fighting off attacks from three different directions could do only limited damage. Remaining lightnings could then drop their bombs. They would dispatch the fixed target quickly. A possible extra strike plane, built in targeting sites, and a somewhat higher resolution radar would make it more likely the vehicular target would get located as well. Finally, what if six Sukhois? would defend against four F-35s. It would be a barrage of missiles early. Most F-35s would die early and they would quickly run out of missiles. After Sukhois spent all their modern missiles, their adversary would at best have a single plane remaining. Final tally of all variants and both scenarios would thus favor F-35, but not by much. Downside of its victory would be its relative lack of option to run away that would be compensated with better air-to-ground performance. Of course, a plane's worth can't be explained by a one-on-one -on -one battle, which is why these scenarios didn't even consider such unlikely setup. Even these 4 on 4 matchups don't tell the whole story. Flanker can carry more payload to greater distances, but that too is relative, due to possible threats forcing it to fly low, unlike F-35. Flanker also has an edge in very close combat, but modern missiles and sighting devices make that edge quite small. Its thrust vectoring can come handy in one-on-one -on -one gunfights, but in multi-ship fights it is not as useful. Its subsonic acceleration is not much better than F-35s, but its transonic and supersonic acceleration is. But most modern battles would not even get to dogfight ranges. Most real-world battles either involve overwhelming numbers or total initial surprise for one side. Stealth also has a broader tactical value. It can be used to plan ingress routes around enemy's defenses, which Su-35 could not hope to use without getting in a fight. One could say Lightning Stealth is there not to secure a win in a battle of equally matched sides, but to avoid a fight in the first place or if the lightnings enjoy a favorable position to ensure their losses are minimized. Stealth itself can't really fight its way out of disadvantageous situation. Of course, stealth comes at a cost. Lightnings are more expensive to develop, buy and operate, and they need more maintenance between missions, generating less sorties per given time period. Both planes share data between onboard sensors and assemble a threat image. They both share data with other planes as well. F-35, though, shares broader datasets and interprets outside data as its own. It can assign threats to whole formations. That may result in seconds quicker reaction or in less wasteful missile per target allocation, or simply in being aware of more threats. Said edge is not as visible in simple scenarios, but in multi-ship battles with dozens of planes and other ground threats, such sensor fusion becomes more important. Sukhoi's main issues are current lack of stealth, certain key modern subsystems and weapons. F-35's issues is starting investment price tag and relatively worse supersonic performance, as well as fairly small weapons carriage when in stealthy configuration. Lightning's stealth can in certain scenarios also lead to total surprise attacks, while Sukhoi's range and supersonic performance advantage can somewhat help to fight against them. Lightnings are not overwhelmingly better, and in certain situations their cost will outweigh their capability edge. They are not the best solution for all users in most situations. But when a user can afford them, and mission is very dangerous, F-35s may very well be a better option than Sukhois. If you liked my analysis, you can always subscribe to this channel. And if you really like Binkov, you can support him via Patreon.